Hey, everybody. Welcome back. That 70s card show. John Keating here. Uh, episode 275 of the Basement Tapes. Um, this is an epic set. The one you've all been waiting for. And uh, should we just walk away when this is all done and blow it all up? Maybe, maybe not. But 275 gets the 1975. That was purely unintentional. The 1975 Tops uh, baseball set. Uh, and this is a two for one show for you, right? Because we have the minis as well. So, uh, the regular set, I got 661 of these, it says. So, uh, apparently there is a variation. Maybe we learn about that here in a few, but I got the whole set. Uh, not sure if there's a master set involved. Uh, let's look at the minis. The minis, I only have 11 of those and I look at those often trying to find those cards uh out there I try to buy big lots of them and i always i never pull the trigger but uh i need to i need to do better so see what happens there uh the 1975 tops minis going over to beckett beckett has a lot to say about it i'm sure 660 total cards average value two dollars 88 cents uh one thousand nine hundred and three dollars fifty cents is the total value 500 to 1200 dollars a set of these will cost you probably a little uh in the upper range of that i would think in uh, a really good condition 64 rookie cards in this set these things suffer a little bit from some miscutting uh a lot of miscutting both top and bottom and side to side as well as um a lot of fish eyes on this one for some reason uh and fading so vibrant the colors that uh they tend to fade uh I think they tend to fade more at least that's what I'm, I'm i'm envisioning the purple and pink ones fading more than others so 1975 top set consists uh standard size cards this one 1975 top set consists of 666 660 standard cards the design was radically different in appearance from sets of the preceding years the most prominent change was the use of the two color frame surrounding the picture area rather than a single subdued border of course we learned this from opg but i'm going to read it again anyway uh, a facsimile autograph appears on the picture and the backs are printed in red green and gray cards were released in 10 card wax packs 18 card cello packs and 25 uh, with a with a 25 cent uh, srp and were packaged 24 to a box and 15 boxes to a case as well as a 42 card rack packs which each cost 49 cents upon release the cello packs were issued 24 to a box cards 1989 and 212 depict the mvps of both leagues from 1951 through 1974 the first seven cards feature players one through seven listed in alphabetical order breaking records or achieving milestones during the previous season cards 306 through 313 pictured league leaders in various statistical categories cards 459 through 466 depict depict the results of postseason action team cards featured a checklist on the back for players on the team and show a small inset photo of the manager on the front. The following players' regular issue cards are explicitly denoted as All-Stars. 150, 80, 140, 170, 180, 260, 320, 350, 390, 400, 420, 440, 470, 530, 570, 600. This set is quite popular with collectors, at least in part due to the fact that the rookie cards of George Brent, Gary Park, Carter, Keith Hernandez, Fred Lynn, Jim Rice, and Rabin Yow are all in the set. This was... I uh, I put a flag in the fact that I believe 1975 was the first big year for me. I know that was the first. Uh, I think it was the first year I started playing little league, and I remember I remember getting these these packs uh, vividly uh, and having beaten the crap out of them by holding them in my grubby little hands. Uh, as with OPG, the top three players in here would be. Let's see here. No doubt about it, right? It's going to be George Brett, Robin Yount, and uh, the Jim Rice is the popular one here. Remember uh, OPG, it was uh, George Brett, Robin Yount, Gary Carter, I believe. So Gary Carter slid a, a little bit down here. Oh, I lied. Yeah, he has slid a little bit down. Uh, top three again, Brett, Yount, Rice, and then the next level down from that is Munson, Rose, Nolan Ryan, Gary Carter. Keith Hernandez uh, and uh, Hank Aaron card number 660, the last one in the set. So uh, this has a lot of color and it has a lot of uh, banging baseball players in it as well. Uh, let's read for the minis, okay? Uh, 
The set is a parallel to the regular 1975 top set. Each card measures two and a quarter by three and an eighth, and the set was regionally issued. Michigan and California were among the two areas to receive this issue. These cards were also sporadically distributed, dis distributed, distributed in other areas, as collectors have recalled getting them in the local areas or then those other than those mentioned above. The cards are currently valued the same as the regular 75 Tops cards and have proven not to have remained as popular as the regular 1975 issue. That's good to hear. The cards were issued in 10 card packs, which cost 15 cents on issue and were packed 36 to a box. So uh, it says the same there, uh, same pricing, uh, although it says 660 350 average value, $2,307.25 total value, which is more than the other one. Uh, but the set, the complete set is $500 $1,200. let us look at the top three there. It may be different. It might not be different. Let's see. We'll find out together, okay? Uh, top card is Brett Yout and then Nolan Ryan. Uh, so uh, that's interesting right there. We have some changes in that as well. And then... Uh, Interestingly enough, the next layer down is the Yastrzemski Cepeda MVP, Pete Rose, and then the Gary Carter. So a lot of interesting Beckett uh, anomalies there. Not anomalies, but just the way uh, the, the leaderboard kind of switches around there between OPG, between uh, the regular set, and between the minis. So, uh, yeah, that's fun. I just learned that right now, folks. Okay. Uh, uh, TCDB, 1975 tops, 660 cards. Teams depicted, Braves, Orioles, Red Sox, Dodgers, Angels, Cubs, White Sox, Reds, Indians, Tigers, Astros, Royals, Dodgers, Milwaukee Braves, Milwaukee Brewers, Twins, Expos, New York Giants, New York Mets, Yankees, Athletics, Philadelphia Athletics, Phillies, Pirates, Padres, San Francisco Giants, Cardinals, and the Rangers. So I skipped over the uh, Brooklyn Dodgers by saying Dodgers twice, but... Uh, Again, we have the MVP cards, so there is a lot happening there. Hall of Famers, they're everywhere, folks. Uh, again, due to uh, 84 on record, due to highlights, due to league leaders, due to all-stars, not all-stars, uh, MVPs, all that stuff. Rookies, again, uh, Carter, Rice, Hernandez, uh, Yao, and uh, that fellow from Kansas City. Uh, no real insert, inserts there, as, as far as I could tell, unless there's a mail away. Comments. This is going to take a minute. So uh, everybody hang in there. GoldenEye tells us, does this set start at all? I have a complete tops from 1976 to 2011 and still going. Uh, JC88 says, first pack of cards my dad bought for me was 1975 tops from our little grocery store. The rather forgettable Fred Sherman of the Astros is the only card I can remember seeing in the first pack. I've been collecting ever since and I have all the top sets from 1976 to 2012. Thanks, Dad. Uh, Cubs win 70 says, first pack of cards I ever opened was a pack of 1975 tops. I didn't know any of the players and was mostly interested in local teams, Cubs and Sox, and the colorful borders. Only player I remember was Blue Pal because he had a funny name. Uh, NSE Endo or NS Endo says first pack of cards I bought from the deli near my house was 1975 tops. I remember getting a Tom Seaver card and giving it to my dad, who was a huge Met fan. That's pretty freaking cool right there, huh? Uh, Round the Diamonds back. He's our guy. I finally figured out how to distinguish between the tops and the tops mini wrappers. Look at the baseball. Red stitches are tops wrappers and black stitches are tops mini wrappers. This man never sleeps. Uh, a Simpson tells us first pack of cards I got when I was five years old, got me hooked on baseball. And when I was seven, started my collection. Still have those cards from the rack pack in my collection and know each card from that pack. Or Gava says this has to be the coolest tops set design of all time. How cool is that? Huh? Sutton one tells us love the colors and the borders. One of my favorite sets. Panzer Doug says, I do believe this set was the set from which I purchased my first pack of baseball cards. Sure had a lot of them, but nothing either. Nothing earlier was 10 and 75. Of course, none of those or any other baseball or hockey survived the 70s. Jeff's, Jeff Z. Cub fan says, this was the first pack of cards I ever opened on my own. Chin Music tells us my first pack was 1975 tops. Too young to remember the specific cards. Dad bought me the cards so he could have the gum. Aha! Uh, Sir Furukawa tells us always love the colors of the set. I didn't start collecting until 1980, so I could never afford this set as a child. 
And as an adult, I can't justify buying it for myself. So I still just admire it from afar. That's appreciative right there. That's what cards are uh, all about, my friend. Uh, C2 Cigar says the design is similar to the 1971 Topps Football All-Star cards. This is one of the ugliest set tops ever produced. Some of the color combinations are nauseating. I would have been a lot better. It would have been a lot better if they used matching team colors. So uh, cheers to you, buddy. Uh, K. John K. Johnson HP says my grandmother gave me this complete set new mail order. I believe in 1973 and 1974, I built the sets from packs and trading. I sorted into teams and filled them in a box. They got less handling, and I remember it wasn't as much fun. But I liked cards and especially the color. Brent RC and Aaron set were memorable. I love this set as a collector and especially with the sentimental value, not to mention I'm a Royals collector, so it has the Brett RC. C. Cook says, my first packs, don't know how many or even opening them. Well, I would have been five. I remember when I was six finding them again. I was so excited to find out I had a Johnny Bench card. Such a blessing to, blessing to discover baseball in 1975, living near the Big Red Machine. Big Bob 8188 says, this was the first set of cards I ever bought. I was seven years old, and I would spend my entire $1 allowance on packs of cards and the long rope gum at the local 5 and 10 in Westwood. Not SoCal, but NorCal. I never completed the set, and it kind of went by the wayside until I found them about two years ago and put them in a binder. I just completed the set with the Fred RC and the Fred Lynn RC card. Now I only need about 40 more cards for the mini set. My first childhood memory will be complete. Pass game, Passe Gaming says, I really like this set. They scream 70s, sort of like the 1990s top scream the 90s. I had always wished they released a set during the 80s that incorporated, incorporated neon in some way, as opposed to that wood paneling set that should have been released during the 70s too. Composer Mike says, could this be the most important set of the decade? Cards have more 3D treatment of team names and best rookie class since 1955. The colors, some of which are hideous, seem to work even though they do not match the franchise uniforms depicted. Perhaps this is due to the images being part of my collect and conscious for so long. John John TS1 says, I was a kid growing up in the mid-70s living in Philly. Philly. My two favorite players in the world were Pete Rose and Thurman Munson. The 1975 Tops was the very first set I ever collected. I love those colorful borders. The 1975 set reminds me of the 63 Corvette split window. It was the only year that they did these beautiful colors. The cards were crisp and colorful. I remember saving my money for packs of cards. My first Holy Communion, birthdays, Christmas. Two pieces of advice that I was given when I started collecting. Never rubber band my cards and never mark the checklist. I'm glad I listened and I still have them to this day. And I love them just as much now as I did when I was collecting them as a kid. I collected 1975 to 1993 tops. And I built sets 71 to 74 in the last five years. Fun stories there. Everybody appreciate that. Packaging, uh, beautiful wax box there. Uh, good times, begin with bazooka. Let's see what else we say here. And kids take plenty along wherever they go. Make sure you have enough bazooka to keep the good times rolling. Uh, all, 66, all 660 cards in one series featuring special 25th anniversary, most valuable player cards, trading card, bubble gum, all that stuff. Remember, these guys selling bubble gum folks so everything's about the bubble gum there's a wax box there who wouldn't love to have a wax box 15 cents a pack uh i mean a wax case i should say a couple wax cases there uh there is a cello uh, i believe 25 cents there is a uh wax pack of course we're talking about the black stitches according to one of our guys around the diamond there's a cello pack nice horizontal card with a uh losing uh, is that Steve Garvey, that jerk? Uh, anyway, uh, somebody there wiping the dust off their, their legs and buttocks. Nice, most valuable player card on the back of the cello packs with uh, the 56 Don Newcomb and Mickey Mantle represented. There's the red seams. You have the Tops Sports Club that you could join, join the club. Uh, blah, blah, blah. I can't read that too well. There's Hank Garen. Card number 660 on the front of that cello pack with uh, Cesar Geronimo on the back. There's a nice uh, cello pack box there. There's a rack pack featuring Johnny Bench and Fergie Jenkins and Phil Necro and Jim Hunter. And uh, I don't know who that is. Is that Don Goat? Maybe that's Don Goat there for the Reds. There's another wax pack that features uh, Robin Yao, 
as a rookie there. So fun, fun, fun. So it's all there. I don't really need to tell you too much about this that you don't already know because it's a gorgeous set. Hey, kids, we've got Tops 1975 baseball cards, new feature cards, including 25th anniversary MVP cards. Join Top Sports Club. Information on back of rappers. Oh, happy birthday. It says happy birthday back there. Celebrate. Yes, bet, you bet we are. Blah, blah, blah. So it goes on about their 25th anniversary of producing cards. Uh, and obviously, they count the 1951 uh, red and blue backs as part of the anniversary. Uh, so celebration for Tops, 25 years in 1975. A lot of trivia here. 1975, Tops released a similar version of its base set in the Midwest and West Coast minis. Our card for card reproductions would measure two and a quarter by three and an eighth. Card number 120, Steve Busby uh, shows Fran Healy. Uh, card number 300, Reggie Jackson, should have an all should have had an all-star designation on it as he was a starter. Card 372, John D'Aquista was named the 1974 Tops All-Star Rookie Team, but his uh, card is missing the trophy designation. Uh, here we go again. The Herb Washington story is clearly uh, laid out for us. Number 407, Herb Washington is listed as a pinch runner since he was strictly used for pinch running and never had a plate appearance or carried a glove in anger in his two-year career. Uh, no other player with at least one baseball card has a pinch runner designation uh, as his position. Larry Haney shows Dave Duncan in card number 626. Another little twist here is uh, card number one is a record breaker card for Hank Aaron. Uh, highlights. So we have highlights with him, Brock, Gibson, uh, K-Line, Nolan Ryan, Mike Marshall. And then a three-player three card of Busby, Bosman, and Nolan Ryan throwing no hitters. Henry Aaron in his highlight card is designated as an NL All-Star. I've said this before uh, because uh, he was uh, not a Brave uh, in 1975. He was a Brewers, so they put it on his NL highlight card. And uh, his... AO card, his Brewer card, number 660, goes without that designation. Speaking of designation, it clearly says designated hitter there. So a uh, fun little thing there for you. Let's read about uh, one of these players here. Rico Cardi, we can't read about. Uh, there's not much here. Look at Lindy McDaniel, man, finishing up that career. 1955 started, 1975. He's got another card. He played for the Cardinals, Cubs, Giants, Yankees, and the Royals. Uh, what a career he had. I'm not sure if he won anything in that period of time playing for the Cardinals uh, before their big years in the 60s. The Cubs never won anything back then. The Giants didn't win anything in the 60s. The Yankees were in the throes of the Horace Clark years. So uh, Lindy McDaniel, uh, what a career he had. Um, I'll probably look up his baseball reference here uh, when we're done. There's the team cards with the checklist. And you could get it sent away there. Send 40 cents plus one baseball wrapper to box 7630 Westbury, New York, home of the Westbury Fair. Uh, 11590 includes zip code. Print clearly, void where prohibited, regulated, or taxed. Offer expires December 31st, 1975. Allow four weeks for delivery. Uh, Bill Parsons, he's card 16, 613, named Sporting News as the American League Rookie Pitcher of the Year in 1971. Bill was Brewer's top pitcher the following season. Had back-to-back -back victories on June 11, 19, uh, June 11 and June 16, 1973. Traded to St. Louis, 12 to 74. So uh, Bill Parsons, uh, I'm not sure if he got a share of the World Series in 1974, but uh, he only pitched. Only pitched uh, either two or three innings pitched in four games. So sounds pretty pathetic there. His ERA must have been. Exploding. Oh, I didn't give up any runs either. So, huh. anyway, uh, there's the rookie cards there with uh, Jack Cusick, uh, Dyer Miller, Vern Rule, and Paul Siebert. And uh, let's see if we can get to some of the leader cards. Uh, there's Orlando Pena, Tony Taylor at the stick, Team Clyde. A lot of airbrushing happening here, folks. So, uh, if you're a purist, please turn your head. Uh, look at Rudy, Rudy, Rudy Miola as a famous. Uh, um, card, right? Action card 533, him popping a ball up straight in the air at spring training for the Angels. Uh, classic card right there. Let's get to some goods. Doyle Alexander throwing the rock. Richie Ebner at Veterans Stadium for the Pirates. 
Pete Lecoq, card number 494. He's a he's a fan favorite. Uh, so Nolan Ryan, that's the card I see often out of this set, uh, pink and purple. Uh, Rick Dempsey with the Yankees. It might surprise a lot of people. He was a twin and a Yankee before he was a Baltimore Oriole. Bob Coluccio, uh, he's taking a called strike, looks like, for, uh, for an out. Called third strike, perhaps. Uh, there's the championships for both leagues. Is that Frank Tavares right there? Just might be. And, uh, of course, you have the World Series there with, uh, is that Billy North? Perhaps that's Billy North. Anyway, uh, 75 tops. Uh, tops minis are exact same as these other than size. Of course, uh, a true parallel was odd back in the day i know there were some parallels way way back in the day but this is a 660 card set with a parallel of smaller dimensions uh so that's the 1975 tops tops mini there's old uh, hulk brian downing tito fuentes no headband by the way in 1975 uh basement tapes number 275 i'm going to Stop recording, but I'm going to keep scrolling through the gallery and just shouting out players' names and uh, random unchecked facts. Thanks, everybody.